Okay, so before we get started, I actually I'm showing you the album we're going to create. I had some feedback in one of my videos that said, why don't you do the walkthrough up front? And I think it makes total sense. You actually get a view of what you're going to make and then you can decide if you want to keep going. So we're making this eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter album. The reason it's eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter is so that I don't have to trim down my my decorative sheets as much because these are eight by eight. So that gives me a little um, trim around the side. So that's why I've chosen that size uh, for this eight by eight pad. So this is a very sweet little album. I'm just going to show you from the side. And um, it's got a, let's see, three quarter inch spine on this album and it's it's a trifold so I'm there is a obviously a longer walkthrough near the end of the video that shows you how I decorated and I'm having trouble I have to take this little dangly off my phone but anyway I just want to show you what we're making so we're going to have a fold out on the right hand side with a pocket and some paper some some mat mats we're going to have a left hand side with a gatefold opening and in this gatefold, we have just a plain page, we've got a pocket page, and then we have a three by four waterfall. All right, so that's the right hand side. I'll just close this up out of the way. And then in the center, we also have a, a vertical gatefold. And inside here, we are, we also have a vertical four by six waterfall. So lots of room for pictures and everything else. So that's the walkthrough. So now you can decide if you want to follow along and create this one for yourself. Um, so let's get going. Okay, guys, so here's the materials we're going to use for this kit, um, for this album rather. And I'm using the 8x8 collection pack, um, Sunshine on My Mind from Graphic 45. I love this paper. This is a watermelon paper. So obviously this is a summer themed album. Um, let me just quickly show you the different patterns. So we've got beautiful pomegranate and watermelon on one side and then some gingham. Just stunning. Really, really, really pretty papers if you haven't seen them already and you're kind of on the fence about what to do. But a watermelon print with a watermelon stripe. Gorgeous, gorgeous papers. Then you've got enough sort of different types of cards to do um, little embellishments with. So here's one and there's the backs. I love this. We've got some postcards on the back. So I'm going to be making a waterfall with those for sure. Okay, we've seen this one. Some gorgeous little tickets. We're going to use this as well. And then this is the showstopper, which is the cover page, um, the paper I'll use for the cover page. I may or may not uh, add a couple of embellishments from this sticker pack. So this is the cardstock sticker set. Okay, and then in terms of basic materials, I'm using white 110 pound cardstock for the base of the album. Okay, and then of course your double sided tape and your glues. All right, so let's get into baking the base right away. Okay, so I'm just gonna get started here and just go over this again. So I've got my double-sided tape that I'm gonna be using. Any brand is fine. I, li I like this one, which is the Suk Wang Made in Korea. Um, anyways, that's just the brand that I use, but you can use whatever. I'm also using Nouveau Glue. I actually, I always use Art Glitter Glue, but I, I got this new fancy little glue gun, so that's what fits into there. Um, any liquid glue, liquid adhesive that you like is fine. Okay, and here's my heavy cardstock. This is, again, this is 110 pounds. Okay, so let's start with um, the center of the folio, which is what I usually start with the center, okay? So grab a piece of your eight and a half by 11 cardstock, okay? The first thing we're gonna do is cut out the base. So for the base, we're gonna cut this at eight and a quarter by nine and a quarter. Now, one thing I want to tell you about how I do my cutting, I will always quote you the measurements as length by width, just so there's no confusion, okay? So always length by width. So first piece we're going to cut is eight and a quarter by nine and a half, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and cut this down. Oh, let me put that back. That's my little scoring blade. So eight and a quarter. Sorry, I'm just making sure I measure it right. 
Okay, and I'm trying to minimize scraps, so I cut it along the eight and a half inch side. So eight and a quarter by nine and a half. So actually, sorry guys, I think I just cut that at eight and one eighth. So let me just get a new piece after I said not to waste cardstock. All right, sorry, eight and a quarter. We're on the road to recovery here. Okay, by nine and a half. So I'm making this album, as I mentioned, this has a three quarter inch spine, okay? So obviously, this is my back page, and now I need to create a spine and a little flap to attach the base cover to the left-hand side. So I'm gonna go ahead and score this at half an inch and then at one and a quarter of an inch. So half an inch, this is where I am going to attach. And then I will slide over to one and a quarter inches, and that creates my three quarter inch spine, right? And I'm using a combo scoreboard and blade. Oop, my little Hello Kitty charm is dangling in front Oops. of the camera. Let me get that out of the way. Okay, so there's my score lines, and now you can just fold along your score lines and get your bone folder just to press those down. I will do that in a minute when I find that. But this is now the base of the album and the front cover will be attached here. So let's just set that aside for a second. And so for this part, we're having a top flap and a bottom flap. So again, grab your next piece of cardstock and we're gonna glue as we go these pieces, okay? So just keep this to the side because we're gonna bring it back in a second. And let's go ahead and cut out the top flap so your top flap is going to be um, <coughs> six and a half inches by eight and a quarter. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just moving this out of the way. I just flipped this around because one corner of my paper is unfortunately bent, but okay, so that is my six and a half and then again, eight and a quarter. Oh, that, sorry, that was my cardstock that I used, that I messed up, but better put that over to the side. Okay, six and a half by eight and a quarter. Okay, I'm gonna turn, make sure I've got eight and a quarter. All right, and now this flap will be attached here. Okay, so what you wanna do is just make sure because sometimes depending on you know how you're cutting it might be a little bit longer but I want it to be the exact same width as this bottom page okay I'm gonna take a sliver off because I think I must have just not been right on the line but so sometimes you just need to do that okay and now turn this so that your six and a quarter inch six and a half inch side is along the uh, scoreboard Okay, and we're going to score this at half an inch and five eighths of an inch because I'm making half an inch is where I'm attaching it, and then the five eighths of an inch is so that I have a little teeny one eighth of an inch spine. Okay, so you're just going to go over an eighth of an inch and create this teeny tiny spine. You might think, oh gosh, why bother? But it really gives you that tiny little bit of extra space under the flap because there is a waterfall under here, okay? So make sure you fold that so that you have this little tiny bit of extra space there. Okay, so we'll set that here. And now we'll cut the bottom flap. So bottom flap again is, so this bottom flap is five and a half by eight and a quarter. Okay, so I'm going to cut down to five and a half and eight and a quarter again. You could almost cut all your sheets down to eight and a quarter because that's almost the measurement for everything. And now once again, you're going to turn this onto the short side and you're going to score along this long side and you're going to score again the same way, half an inch and five eighths of an inch. And then you move over 
one eighth and score again. Okay, so a little tiny spine, but just a little bit of extra space. No. Okay, so let me move this aside for a second and we can start sticking this together. Now I, for some reason, I cannot find my bone folder. So if you don't have one or you can't find yours, you can use almost anything. So I'm taking this pen, it's got kind of like a blunt edge and I'm just going to run it along the score lines just to make a nice, neat score line. But that just goes to show you, you don't have to have all the fancy tools. If you just look around your house, there's things you can use. Okay, so see what I've done there. Okay, so that's the bottom. I'm just gonna do that with all the pieces where I have score lines. So this is my top piece. Yes, um, I'm just remembering somebody, I saw a video somewhere where somebody used the top of a spoon, the, sort of the, the curved side of the spoon as a improv bone folder, which worked well too. Okay. I will try to look for mine when we go off camera, but for now we're doing this. So this is going to be attached here. So as your top flap is the bigger one and the bottom flap goes down here. So they're sort of going to overlap like this. Okay. So let's go ahead and stick those down. So I am going to now, I'm going to use my double sided tape for this. So I want you to just grab your tape and I'm going to actually, because I like it, I think it's a bit neater to attach these on the outside and then I will cover the back with obviously a sheet, but I'm going to attach them like so. So I want you to put your tape on the inside of the fold. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And just a quick tip about your tape. If you've done this before, you already know, but if it's your first time, make sure that you're not getting your tape on the score line. You always want to leave a bit of space because um, that's where it has to fold. So you don't want that to be sticky too. Okay, so there's one and here comes the other one. Okay, and now we can just bring this back and I'm gonna stick these on. So the short one is for the bottom. And what I like to do is I just pull back a corner and I align, first I align everything. So I'm gonna put this, it's going here. So very close to the score line but not on it, right? Okay, so I wanna line that up. I wanna be able to see my score line here, just slightly, okay? So don't go on top of it, so. And then I can just slowly pull out the tape and make sure that everything stays nice and aligned. And there you go, okay? I could do the same with the top. Okay, let's line everything up. And so next what we're going to do, while you're lining this up, I will talk to you about the waterfall. So there's going to be a nice little waterfall under these two flaps that will hold lots and lots of pictures. So I'm just making sure that I like the positioning of this. And I can see I've got it on the score line, so I'm going to just reposition this. And that's why, that's why I do it this way, because sometimes you know, the first time you stick it down, if you've got it all stuck down along the whole thing, it's gonna be a problem to undo it if you've made a mistake. Oops. And you wanna be gentle. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Perfect. Okay, so there is my bottom and top flaps that will cover a very pretty waterfall that's going to be in here. And let's work on the waterfall that goes here. So this will be a vertical waterfall. So let's set that aside, bring my, my cutter back and let's make this waterfall. So um, we're gonna make five flaps for the waterfall, okay? And they're gonna measure six and a quarter by four and three quarters. So let us do that. Oh my God, this tape is sticking everywhere. 
Okay, so six and a quarter by four and three quarters. So there's one, and I'm gonna do one with you, and then you can go off and cut the others. Four and three quarters. Okay, so you're gonna make five of these. So here is the first one, and then simply score at half an inch. That's it, okay? Because this is where we're attaching it. So you're going to make five of these. So scored at half an inch, and I want you to put your double-sided tape on the inside of the fold, okay? Like so. All right, so go ahead and cut out five of these again, six and a quarter by four and three quarters, scored at half an inch, and then come on back and we will continue. Okay, so you should have your five pieces. Your tape is on the outside of the fold. If you folded it this way and your tape's on the inside, it doesn't matter. You want these to be very flippy, so you're going to actually um, burnish them both ways. But when we go to stick them down, your tape should be on the outside of the fold, okay? So you should have your five cards. You can bring back your album base here. And we're simply going to just install our five cards along the middle of the page. And now I wanna center these. So all I'm doing is sort of rough laying them down so I can see how far do I need to go. So that one goes here, because I want them roughly in the center. Now you could measure all these, but uh, I'm doing it like this. Okay, so that's that. And this. And this, okay? So I've made five cards. If you want to make more, you can. I think you may have space for maybe one more. But anyways, roughly, you can see you're gonna have half an inch here probably about half an inch on either side of your base so that you can center this waterfall more or less, okay? So there we go. Slide this over, okay? Mm, that looks to me about three quarters of an inch. If I had a ruler handy, I would measure it, but let me just take this out. I can give it a rough eye here. Yeah, so that's about three quarters of an inch from either side. So you can kind of imagine how to center this, but I'm gonna slide it up. So my first card that I'm gonna position is actually going to be um, the left one, okay? So once you kind of eyeball where you wanna put it, I wanna be just about uh, maybe a quarter inch from the top or so. Okay, actually I'm going to slide these down so they're in the middle from the top and bottom. So we've got about a half inch and a half inch and about three quarters from each side, okay? So I'm gonna pull these out. I'm gonna get these out of the way because the first card is the one that matters. So what you wanna do here, because you wanna make sure everything is nicely lined up, is you can actually draw yourself a line and it doesn't matter, um, you can use pen. We're gonna cover this up. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw a straight line. And if you have one of those T rulers, this is a great place to use it. But I'm just using a leftover piece of cardstock that I know is measured at perfect angles. And I'm just gonna draw a line here because I wanna line up to this. I wanna make sure my first one down is straight. Okay, so you don't have to draw it up and down all the way, but just there. And that's where this is going to go. Okay, now before you stick this down, I want, I don't wanna stick this on white background. I actually want a patterned paper here. So go ahead into your pile of papers and choose a background pattern. So in this case, I think I'm gonna go with this beautiful red gingham. Okay, and we're gonna stick that down first and then put down our waterfall. Okay, so I'm gonna just trim off the excess here, a little, 
the little edge. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick this down right here. So actually now <laughs> that I made you draw this line, I realize it's underneath. But anyway, we'll figure that out again in a moment and possibly in pencil this time. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue this down. So for this, I'm just, I'm using my glue now and I'm gonna go as close to the edge as I can and staying on the paper, thank you. Okay. So the only time you need to do this really is when you're putting a, sort of a waterfall or any kind of that sort of feature on top. You wanna get your patterned paper down first. So let's stick that down. Okay, there we go. Great. Now I can bring this back and you know what? I'm going to, I'm not gonna draw the line that we had. I'm just gonna sort of hold this up so that it's straight up and down. Okay. And now I know where to line up my first card is just sort of along the edge. You can draw out in pencil. You can mark this out in pencil, but I'm just gonna do this. Okay. so. First things first, I will peel the backing off and again, just the corner like that. because I wanna see what I'm doing. And then I'll just line this up, making sure top and bottom look pretty good, pretty even. Okay, once you do the first one, you can get rid of this and you won't need that again because all others will just line up with this first one. So there's that. Okay. And now the other ones will line up here. So grab your next one, make sure it's nice and burnished. And I really would like to know what I did with my bone folder, but anyway, fold that back. Now, before you stick it down, close the top flap and make sure everything is lined up. You might need to make tiny little adjustments there. And you stick that down, okay? Comes the next one, same thing. Peel a little corner back. Line that up. Check it looks good. Okay. And you can, if you know how to do, you can just fast forward this part because it could be a little tedious because they're all exactly the same, same deal. But I always fold them all down again to make sure they're lined up properly. Okay, and last one. There you go. I was debating what color base to use, but I think the white is actually really pretty. Okay, so that's this section will stay closed like this and now you can see why we wanted a little spine you know now that i'm looking at it we even probably could have used a three-quarter spine here but this this will still work very nicely okay so i've got my my center is complete okay great let's go ahead and now work on this right hand side all right so i'm gonna put this to the side bring this back Okay, now for the right hand side, this is the pocket page with the top insert. So the first thing is grab again your heavy cardstock and cut, you're gonna cut the base back part first. So it's going to be eight and a quarter by nine and a half. Okay, so Actually, hold on a second, guys. Eight and a quarter, yes, eight and a quarter by nine and a half. Make sure you put your paper the right way so you don't end up cutting the short side off, or the long side off, rather. So eight and a quarter by nine and a half. Okay, and I'm going to have to attach this to the back page, to the center, rather. So I'll bring my scoring blade in. And I'm going to score this at half an inch. Okay. Here. 
and then I'm going to move this over to one and a quarter inches so that I can get my spine. Okay, I've since gone to grab a butter knife to do this business and I'm actually using the other side of it. It really actually works not too badly. I will say the scoring, the uh, bone folder is better. But anyway, as I said, you need to improvise sometimes. Okay, so there is my left, sorry, my right hand side with the place I'm going to attach this to the center and then a spine. Okay, so now I wanna create um, the pocket. So the pocket's gonna sit up on here Okay, so I'm gonna create the pocket for here, and this is super easy. You're just gonna cut a piece that's eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So I have this scrap I'm just gonna make uh, use of. So try to use up, obviously try to use up scrap paper whenever you can. So eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter, just a simple square. And all you're gonna do with this is glue it along the three edges so that it's stuck to your base only along these three edges, okay? Just gonna line. I'm actually so I'm lining it up to this score line here, okay? Because if for some reason, like I said to you, you're a little bit off, which I am, it's easy. I can just trim this off, right? So once I've got my pocket on, I can take a look and see do I need to do any trimming? And in this case, I'm just gonna take this tiny little sliver off. It's not a big deal, but it is a little bit extra, okay? So there, that's the pocket, okay? So that becomes the bottom, sorry, that's the, the right-hand side, I keep getting mixed up. Okay, now the only thing, we're gonna do a couple more things here. One is we're gonna put a pocket down here, okay? Not a very big one, but probably, um, Depends on what I'm gonna decorate this with. So I had decided from my patterned paper, and this is important, this is an important part of the process, but from my patterned paper, I had decided, hey, I really love the paper I'm gonna use for the cover. So I think I'm gonna probably use that for the insert here, okay? And what I'm probably gonna do as well is maybe I'm gonna trim it down, I don't know. But I know I wanna use this here, so, or something of, some pieces of this. So that's probably going to mean that the pocket, the flap that I make for the top with the insert is gonna come down about this low, okay? And I'm going to make this eight, I need it to fit in here. So I'm going to make it, I think, eight inches wide. And I'm talking about the insert for this pocket, okay? So let's, let's go ahead and start that. Okay, so this is eight and a quarter, right? I need my pocket to slide in and out of here nicely. I know I've got glue down the edges till about half an inch. So that leaves me with about seven inches of insert. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut something down here. So this will be, um, let me just tell you, sorry. It's a little bit improv because I picked, I just decided that I was gonna do it with this paper. So I'm going to cut it at seven by, Hmm. Yes, I'm gonna actually leave the whole length at 11 and I'm gonna cut it down to seven inches wide, right? And now we're going to score it at the spot where the patterned paper will 
kind of cover it up. So I want to score. I'm using this roughly, right? I may change my mind later, but I know it's going to be something of this sort of size. So I am going to end up scoring at five inches. Okay. So let's score that at five. Like that. And we can fold it over. And this is the card. So this is great because it gives you other more space for photos and it's going to just simply slide right into here like that. Okay. So that's it. And now I'm going to make a pocket across here because I want to be able to slide some photo mats underneath and it'll actually hold down this flap. So my pocket down here is going to be two and a half inches tall. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut that piece. So grab your um, grab your cardstock. I'm just check checking if I've got scraps I can use, but I don't. Okay, that's fine. So this piece is going to measure two and three quarters. So that's how tall the piece is gonna be because you need half an inch to attach the pocket. So two and three quarters, okay, by nine and a quarter. Okay, and then you're gonna score at half inch on three sides. So you're gonna score on the two short sides here here and then along the long side right here okay and then similarly I'm going to cut across these corners so that when I fold it they're not just don't have all the extra paper okay and you can just fold along your score lines and burnish them down And I bring back my album base and this card, this pot and pocket will go right along here. Okay, and then, so you get the idea of what I'm talking about, you'll be able to stick photos in here. Okay, so that's what we're doing. So, okay. grab my double-sided tape here. So this is my first video in a really long time. Um, I don't know, I've just been so busy. I haven't, I've been buying paper and not any time to actually do anything with it, which makes me sad. But I said at some point I need to create something with this watermelon paper and share it. So here we are and I hope I get back into it. I hope this is kind of like my, um, my, introduction back into the creating world and I keep making some time for this because it's so important to create time for yourself uh, and this really I really enjoy it as most of you guys who are into paper crafting I'm sure feel the same way now when I cut this I see a little bit of kind of excess paper so I will just trim it off actually I'm going to use my blade and I'll do it later okay so there is the right side of the album so Grab your album, grab your middle, and let's attach it because this is very satisfying to see this build as you go. Okay, so that's where it's going to get attached. So your double-sided tape will go right here. And you got, like we're two-thirds of the way through the base. Okay, so I'm just sticking that along. And now I can peel back my corner like I do. I'm just gonna line it up. Um, if you wanna put glue on top of this tape, if that's your thing, you can. I've never done it. I also have heard very differing opinions on it. Um, some people say it actually, the two different types of glue downgrade each other. I have no idea. I have only ever used one or the other. I don't layer my adhesives. I don't see the point. I feel like if you have to, there's something wrong with the adhesive. So, but you know, the jury is out. I've debated this before and I'm like, okay guys, everybody do what makes you happy. But I'm just doing the one, uh, the one tape. Okay, so, so far 
I love it. Hope you guys are liking it so far. Let's work on the left-hand side so we can finish this up and get to the fun part, which is decorating. All right, so now we're talking about the front side. So this, um, this is pretty straightforward too. I bring my cutter back here. All right, so first of all, I'm going to, th this, if you recall, kind of opens up on both sides. So let's go ahead and do the um, the base part first. So this we're gonna measure, this is easy. What did I do with my, my album? Okay, we're just gonna measure a piece that's eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. No scoring. So that's my base, just put that there for a second. And now I'm gonna make the left-hand side flap, which is gonna be eight and a quarter by six, and we do need to do some, some scoring. I keep trying to use my scraps, but it's not working out. Okay, we'll use those as uh, photo mats. So again, eight and a quarter. by six. Okay, and then we're gonna score this one. You're gonna score this at half. Half an inch. And this one, I'm going to make it a little thicker, so I want a quarter inch spine, so you're gonna then score it three quarters. Okay, half and three quarters on this one. Okay, that's folded up. This is my left-hand flap, so I'm gonna lay it on my paper on the left-hand side, so don't forget. And now I'm gonna make my right-hand flap. Okay, so this is eight and a quarter by five and a quarter. What is that? So, Again, eight and a quarter. Five, five and a quarter. And I'm gonna score that the exact same way. So half and three quarters. and just fold along your score lines. And that's going here, okay? Let's stick those down. So here, I am going to stick it to the inside. Why? Because I have to then attach this to my album base which will go to the outside. So I don't want to layer everything stuck on top of each other, okay? So we'll worry about that later, but just make sure now for the right-hand side, you're going to put your score tape on the outside of the fold. Okay, and I'm going to stick this one down and then we'll do the other side. Okay, I'm lining up. Oh, I'm going to nudge it a little bit higher. Okay, that looks good. I'm just turning it around so I can see it better. I'll just slowly okay so there's the side flap okay and now stick down the other side so got my tape on there
All right. Oh, I love it. Now, this side is going to have a little three by four waterfall on it. So let's go ahead and cut those pieces out. So what you're going to do for the waterfall pieces is you're going to cut um, five, let me think, four, Yeah, let's cut out five, let's do six. Let's do six waterfalls on this side. Now, I the waterfalls can get very thick, so I'm actually gonna switch over to a lighter cardstock. You don't um, necessarily have to, but, and we didn't for the other side, but I'm gonna go with a 65 pound because once you start layering paper on them, you'll notice it gets very, very thick. So this is just a lighter version of the same paper and you can switch over to that regular kind of weight now. You can still do the other one. It's, it's only gonna be six flaps, but the lighter one, I think I feel, once I layer it up with patterned paper, it can get, uh, it can get a little heavy if I use the heavier one. And for the middle flap, we didn't switch over because I'm actually not going to cover each of those pages with the cardstock. It's only going to be the front, the front waterfall that gets covered and just a trim on the others because I'm leaving them blank to hold photos. So, but these ones we're going to put patterned paper on, on each one. So I think it's better if we just go ahead and use the lighter paper. Okay. So like I said, we're going to cut out six of these. Okay. So we're going to do one together and then you can go off, um, just pause the video and cut the other five. Okay, so let's do one together. So these are gonna measure three and three quarter tall by four and a quarter wide, because they're gonna be horizontal uh, photo mats. So let's go ahead and cut down our um, three and three quarter side. So there's three and three quarter by four and a quarter which means that if you're using the eight and a half by 11 paper, you should get two on one cut, right? And then you're gonna just score this at half an inch. Easy, okay? So that's all you're doing and you're gonna put your score tape along the outside of the line. And then if you bring back what we just made, these waterfalls are gonna go right here and they fit perfectly in this space, okay? So go ahead and make six of these. Okay, so you should have your six waterfalls and I want to start to stick these one and a quarter inches down from the top. So I mark that out with my pencil and these are going to just be very easy to install. Again, if you have a T ruler, you can use that or you can go ahead with anything that you know is at 90 degree angle or you can just measure one and a quarter to each side and make sure you're lined up properly for the first one, okay? But you can tell you've got a quarter inch roughly on each side here, okay? So that's gonna go down. The reason I'm not um, putting my patterned paper down yet is I'm doing something a little different on this side and there's not a lot of paper. Uh, there's not white space underneath these and you'll see what I mean when we decorate, but you might be wondering why I did it earlier and I'm not doing it now. So <clears throat> go ahead and get all of these stuck down. So again, same procedure, line it up, make sure it looks good. If you need to, you know, this one needs to nudge over a tiny smidgen. Okay. Right. Two. Okay, we're just gonna keep going and then we're going, we're literally almost done, which I love because I don't wanna spend my life making the base of an album. I wanna spend my time decorating the album. Okay, one more. Oh, no, two more after this one. Okay, 
So there's that. Okay. Okay. So I've brought it back and you're going to put your double sided tape down the inside of this fold. So let's do that. And I actually attached it initially to the wrong side, which is good for me to do it before I make you do it. Um, but make sure you attach this to the right place. So your left flap, make sure it's closed. So I've got the water spall piece like that, and I'm attaching this now to the back of this cover. So it's going along this edge on the back. Let me zoom out a bit here. Okay, so I folded it over, so my left flap is closed. I've got a quarter inch spine, and I'm going to attach next to that spine. So it's going to look like that, okay? So I hope that makes sense. I was not paying attention when I did it the first time. And you can just flatten the spine while you're doing this to make it easier for yourself, but line it up. There we go. All right, so we've actually finished the base. Let's do like a little walkthrough of where we're at, okay? So left side opens up. I've got a left flap, my right flap, which is opening up into a waterfall. We're gonna put a little tab down here to help hold this down. So we'll do that in a second after we do this walkthrough. Left side opens up. I've got a pocket, which I'm gonna put some photo mats in, and then this that slides out. And then in the center, we open up to a vertical six by four waterfall. So that's it. Um, let's do a couple of remaining little pieces. So I wanna put a little slim pocket down here because I'm going to, it's gonna be really nothing, but it's gonna hold down some photos or it's gonna hold this section down. So I will be able to put little mats in here and keep this, these photos or this waterfall a little bit flatter. So let's go ahead and do that. So grab your heavy card stock again. And let me just get this out of the way. So I'm just gonna double check the size that I need. Because I literally, this was not part of my original design, so I just thought of it now as we were doing the walkthrough. So normally I don't improvise like this, but we're going to today. So I want it to be one and a quarter inches tall. Okay, so let me move this out of the way. So I need to cut a piece that is one and three quarter inches tall because I need to score, right? Cut that one and three quarters. Oh, goodness, I think I cut that crooked. All right, one and three quarters. And then in terms of width, I think this is four and a half, four and three quarters wide. So three quarters, sorry, I'm just thinking out loud. Five and a quarter. Okay, so now cut this five and a quarter inches wide. Okay, and now score this on three sides at half an inch. So it's one, two, three, and let's cut those corners off to clean up here. We will clean up the desk before we get into the decorating side of things. Okay, so there's my little bottom pocket. And I will play. Okay, so that's gonna go right here under the photos. Okay, so get your double-sided tape. You just wanna maybe burnish the edges a little. Okay, let's 
just, I've got my tape on the sides here. I'm just gonna peel that off and stick this down. And we'll talk about some other things that you could add if you like. So now I am sticking this down so there is a quarter inch trim around it because basically that's all the room. Like I don't need to put patterned paper down because I've got this here. Okay, now make sure, goodness, you're, you've got clearance for your bottom flap, okay? So, so my bottom flap is down. I wanna make sure it doesn't touch the bottom flap. So I'm gonna go a quarter inch from either side. I'm almost down to the edge of the bottom, but that's fine, okay? So that's that little pocket there. And then you can make a bunch of little cards Let's see if I have something cut to size to show you. But anyways, you you get my drift. You're going to put some cards in here and they can hold this section down. Okay. And now if you like for extra space, because in this section, I'm just going to cut, this is where I messed up. I'm just going to cut that off so it stops sticking. In this section, we've got the center that's empty. So here you can just leave as is and just put pictures down or you can add a pocket and more space for pictures. It just depends how you'd like to use the album. Um, what do you have planned for it? So I am going to probably add a pocket because in that case I can also, I can mat a picture here and put smaller things in the pockets or I can leave it as is. So let's go ahead and cut a pocket for this side. And again, I'm into my scraps as you can see. So I'm going to set this over here okay. and then what did I do with my trimmer? Here we go. All right. And I'm going to make just a short pocket. And so for this pocket, I need it to measure nine and a quarter because I need to score the sides. You can find, if you find in your scraps something to use, great. If not, whatever, doesn't matter. Start with a fresh piece. So nine and a quarter here. And then I'm just going to cut this down to five inches. Okay, nine and a quarter by five for your pocket. And you just wanna score it at half an inch on three sides. So along your long side, and then along your two short sides. Okay, and then you can just cut again, cut diagonally, cut those bits off. Get your double-sided tape down along the three sides like that. Okay. So bring your album back and open that up to the center. Now, you see this keeps, when I open it, it just flips open. We are going to put something here that keeps it closed once it's all decorated. So that I'll be in the next part of this video, which is sort of uh, decorating tips and tricks, we'll call them. So I'm just checking that my pocket isn't too big. It looks okay. Remember, just always check because with these things, even if you're like an eighth of an inch off, it can make a difference into how the album folds up, especially if we're using the thicker, um, thicker paper. So just line this up at the bottom and onto the side. Everything looks good. Perfect.
All right. So that's it. We've finished the base of the album. So I'm going to clean out my desk and when we come back, I'm going to start showing you how I'm going to decorate it. Okay, so I have started to decorate the album and I want to show you what I'm using for the three by four um, waterfall. So if you take a look at the eight by eight sheets of paper, there's two sheets that have uh, some three by four cards. They're actually, the width of them is a little bit smaller than three by four. So I do want to show you what I am going to do. So I cut out these cards from here, one, two, three, four, five, and I will find another somewhere. Um, probably just another duplicate of these because I have six flaps. But as you can see, if I put the card down, it doesn't really cover the whole flap. And I really thought this watermelon trim was really cute to be consistent all the way down. So if you take a look at these sheets, you'll see that they've got a watermelon trim top and bottom. And there's three of these sheets, so there's enough. Each of these strips can make enough for two cards. I need six of them. So one, two, four, six, I can get out of two sheets of paper if I just cut off that watermelon trim from the top and bottom. So that's what I'm using to uh, make the bottoms really cute and consistent. So you can either face them up or down. I think I'm gonna put them upside down just for fun, but that's what I'm doing here. And then I'll just use each of these cards on the pages to decorate. And I'm gonna choose the card I like best. They're all really, really nice, but um, I really like this one with the bicycle. Life's a journey, enjoy the ride. So that's probably what I'm gonna use up on the top or also this one, the best things in life are sweet. So I'm gonna cut that out as well. So that's the first sort of design tip I wanna show you. Okay, so next design tip I want to show you is how to keep a flap closed. So I actually um, want to show you something here. So this is the left side. So I already covered my front and back here with patterned paper. Okay, so that is the first step is to cover them up with whatever patterned paper you like. And just to follow up on the last little segment, here's the completed design with the little um, watermelon trim. And you can see, actually, I use the back of the sheet with these little cards that has these sweet little postcards which you can journal. And then I left this part blank for you to add photos and what have you, okay? So I just wanted to show you that. Now I want this flap to stay closed versus flipping open um, when, when I put the album together. So I'm going to show you See when it opens up it, it just stays open I don't want that so what I'm going to do is once you cover these with patterned paper cut out this card and this is about a three by four roughly it's a little bit smaller and what I'm going to do is glue this down here over to the side and about half an inch away from this um, side from the right side here I'm going to glue down only here so this is where I'm going to put glue or double-sided tape and then what happens is that becomes a place for this piece to kind of tuck under um, and stay put when the album is opening and closing, okay? So you can see I'm really only overlapping a half an inch. This is pretty heavy and thick. There's nothing causing it to pop open. I don't need to overlap too much. And if I do, it won't really close properly. So I'm only overlapping it slightly here. So in this case, I'm actually gonna go ahead and use some double-sided tape. So I'm putting along the right hand edge of this card. So also this card is matted on 110 pound cardstock, just so you can have a little bit more um, weight and sturdiness to it because it is gonna get tugged on uh, when you tuck the other, the other card stock underneath it. So I want it to be pretty sturdy, okay? So it's, I've cut out the card, then matted it onto another patterned paper and then onto the white card stock. Now, I know I told you I don't double up on glue, and I don't. But in this case, I want to run a line of glue between the two tape strips that I put down, okay? Just for some extra, extra strength there. Okay, so I'm placing this about half an inch from this edge. Okay, like that. And that's going to hold this down and make a nice little feature. So to close it, you're just going to kind of pry it, hold it open like that. 
and fold the other piece under. So this is a great way to avoid magnets too. So one of the things I hate is really, books get really heavy and expensive when you have to put, um, we have a lot of magnets in them. So this is a way to deal with that. That's actually very cute and interactive, okay? Um, so that I want to show you as well. And the other thing I want to comment on is if you look at the sides of this album, I'm standing it up here for you now. This is three quarters of an inch. This is three quarters of an inch. And this is the front cover, or what I said was gonna be the front cover, but actually, I wanna correct that. I'm gonna have this piece tuck under over here. So the left side will come down and the right side will go over, okay? So this album, I'll actually open the opposite way. And the reason I'm doing that is because for me, I like it all tucked in so the, ha the three quarters of an inch are like this, and just because it's something different, everything's always opening the other way, I thought, okay, let me do it this way. So if you don't want to, you can always have it closed this way, it's just that um, this side will be wider than this side. That absolutely doesn't bother me much at all, but if it bothers you or it doesn't bother you, then do it this way, otherwise you can flip it. So I just wanted you to note that because when I go to do my front cover, I will be decorating the back of the right hand side because it's gonna open the opposite way, okay? Okay, so I have continued decorating the album and I am gonna do a full walkthrough, um, but I wanna show you another little design tip. So in this center section, recall that we had two flaps and then the waterfall underneath. And I want to keep them closed without a magnet, which I promised you. So I'm going to show you the way that I do that. So you're going to just, you know, cut out a card. I, I think that the vertical works best here because what we're going to do is attach it to the top flap with a brad, okay? And then it is going to be able to swing out of place so we can open up the flap. So that's exactly what we're doing. So it's really easy. So first of all, I want to poke a hole up in the corner of this card. So I'm using a self-healing mat and I just poked a hole through there. Okay, and that's going to tell me, I'm going to use this now to mark the page that I'm attaching it to. Okay, so I'm going to open this up and you're going to attach this. So I'm going to, sorry, I want to show you the way that I'm closing this is the top flap goes underneath, the bottom flap goes on top, and then this card that's going to hold everything down sits on top of both of these but it gets attached to this top flap like this okay so I want to position it somewhere where it's going to swing out of the way and it won't be in my way when I go to open the book so I don't want it for example if you put it up here for example you're going to swing it out of the way and it'll be sticking out the top so when you open this up it is a bit in the way. I mean, you can always swing it back, but what I'm trying to do is make it sort of the least obtrusive when I swing it up out of the way. So I'm gonna measure kind of, I'm gonna just kind of keep pulling it down and checking until it's where I want it to be. So it looks like about here is the right spot and it's centered, okay? So I am now going to get a pen and just mark with a little pen mark where I wanna poke this hole. So I'm just grabbing a pen. So I'm going through the hole that I just poked in the card and I'm marking on the bottom page where I want that to go. Okay, so I'm just gonna make sure that I can actually see that. There we go. And I cannot see it because this pen is not awesome. No, I'm just gonna, sorry, bear with me. all right so I have marked it out and I I can see where that is here okay right on my leaf of course I'm lifting it up because really this pen is driving me crazy but normally uh, you can do this a bit more easily than I'm struggling a little but anyways there's my pen mark so I'm going to put my self healing pad under here and you're going to do this on top of the patterned paper, okay? So you want to make sure that you covered this. Now, one thing is you might decide that you leave this side blank and then go over top of the brad with the patterned paper because you will have the back of the brad showing there. So that's an option is to stick this through the patterned paper on the outside, but then on this side, leave this uncovered and then cover, then do your patterned paper over top. 
I, it doesn't matter to me because I'm putting a mat here, so I am going to end up covering the back of the bread, but just wanted to point that out. So we're going to go back with our piercer and poke a hole right there where we marked it out. And now I can bring my card back and I'm just going to push my bread through both of these holes that we created. So one and oops. And through this one. Okay, there we go. All right, so I've pushed that through. I'm just going to open this up on this side. So there's there's my brad attached here, okay? And now you'll see, let's slide this out of the way, that I have this cute little interactive card that will keep this bottom section nice and, and closed, all right? So that's how we're doing that. And of course, I'm gonna mat this out so we won't see that brad. Okay, that's that. And I'm gonna do this something similar over here with this little card. So this was from one of the um, eight by eight sheets and it had all these little cut out, cut aparts on it. But I decided, hey, that kind of looks like I could make it into a little matchbook if I just score it. So this is the way the matchbook will look. And here, same, I'm gonna use a brad, but in this case, I'm gonna just sort of position it so this top flap can tuck underneath it, kind of like a matchbook. So I'm again, we're gonna, Mark this out with a little, maybe I actually don't need, I don't think I need to mark it out with a pen, um, but I'm gonna just position this brad and kind of push down where I want it to be. So I'm just gonna have it so that it's slightly going to overlap that top flap and I'm just gonna gently poke a hole here and then open it up and I can tell where I've made kind of my mark. So now I can go in with my paper piercer all right, and I'm going to put my brad in. We're gonna, again, I'm gonna put a mat on this side so it will cover up the brad. But this is so cute and easy, and then I just have this cute little feature, um, kind of like a matchbook, and it just tucks right in there. So I wanted to show you that as well. Okay, so I just wanna do the final walkthrough of this book. Um, I use the almost the entire eight by eight pad. I just want to show you what I have left. One piece of eight by eight paper and a couple of small scraps. So I really used up everything and I love it. So maybe I'll make a couple of cards with this, but I really like being able to just be done with this kit and have no little leftovers. So here is the cover and I'll just go walk through this in more detail than I did at the beginning of the video because I'm finished decorating. So. What I did with the covers, I told you I was going to actually have this book open the opposite way. Oops, sorry about that. And so the cover is just simply one of the eight by eight sheets. And then I decided I wanted to pop up some of the elements. So I fussy cut these three pieces that are exactly identical to the piece underneath, right? But I just popped them up and that just gives it a little bit of dimension. Okay, so that's that. I'll make some space on my desk. Okay, so here are the sides just covered up with the patterned paper and little um, little strips and scraps that I picked up and I saved. Okay, so now we open it up and let's take a look at the right hand side. So this side I've got a pocket and here's the little piece I just showed you, kind of like a little matchbook. I haven't put it, my mats in there yet, but I will. Okay, then I just have some little cards. I love these little postcard looking things. They can be photo mats or you can use them for journaling. Then if you recall, this piece slides out. So let's slide that out, okay? And this, all this is, is just a nice piece for extra photos, etc. cetera. Um, I'm not sure if I gave you the measurements for this one. I think I did, but it's, this one is seven inches and the full sheet measures 11. So yes, we did actually make this card in the tutorial, just double checking. But again, I just decorated this with the patterned paper, left it blank inside and on the back because I can put photos. I may cover this up with my leftover sheet if I feel like it. Okay, I added this little flap here just for interest. You can um, put some blank paper and put some secret journaling under there. Okay, so that's this section. 
Now if we move over to the center of the album, here's where we just slide that out of the way and open up our center section. So in the top, I just have this beautiful watermelon paper. Here's our waterfall that I showed you before, where I just used the pattern paper along the edges so I have room for plenty of photos here, right? Okay, and the bottom is just very simply decorated with more of the pattern paper. And at first I wasn't sure what to do with these. I thought I'd have to cut them all apart, but I actually like the way it looks just sitting here on its own. Okay. Oops, sorry guys. And now, <laughs> uh, for the right-hand side, or sorry, the left-hand side of the album. So this was a little flap that we made to hold down this side. And I just put a little card on top. This is really tiny. I think it's like a two by three. So I'm gonna probably use that for some journaling just to add some interest. Um, here, I just cut out one of the little cards and I popped it up. And then we open it up. And over here on the left, I just added one of these flaps. So again, you can put some journaling on here and a photo on the back and then some more photos underneath. And I'll just move this over. So we've got the waterfall over on this side. So I've got some cards. Like I said, we're gonna hold down this section to keep these waterfalls from popping up. So I've just cut out some of the cards. I took the, um, the postcards and I just sort of made a trifold. Put photos on there and then here's our little waterfall. And again, or I'm just using the matching trim so it looks very cohesive and it looks really cute with those little watermelons all the way down. So I'll just flip through this so you can have a look at what I did. Okay, so I thought I could journal and put a photo. Here, I just changed it up a little bit with the last ones. This paper is so gorgeous, I'm almost like, don't wanna put photos in here. But anyway, <laughs> I'm sure you all can relate. All right, and then here in the center, we have the pocket piece. And so I just made a few inserts. So here's one. Just to, I just folded this piece of cardstock in half and I, you know, put this little flippy flappy here on top as one of the cutouts from the paper. Again, lots of space for photos. You can tuck it all the way in. I kind of like it so that it's sitting out and sitting on top like that. That looks really cute. Um, here's another little photo mat booklet that I made. There's front and back, and then in the middle, room for more photos as well. So tuck that back in. And then finally, just down here, I just added some of the, the cut aparts. I cut these out too from the paper and popped them up. So I did not end up using any of the embellishments from this kit. This is simply made with the eight and eight, eight by eight pa paper pack and that's all. So of course you could definitely embellish more, but I really wanna show you how you can create <clears throat> with minimal supplies, but really, uh, really beautiful stuff because you know, the more you save on one kit, the more paper you can buy, which is always what we love as, as uh, scrapbookers and card makers, etc. So I'll just, oops, close this back up. And that's it, that's the album. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I haven't been here in a while, but I hope to be back with some more albums and tutorials for you. If you like this, please like it and don't forget to subscribe. It means a ton to me, it keeps me going. Um, I'm doing this for free and because I love it. So also, um, I don't have written instructions right now. Maybe one day I will when I don't work a full-time job. <laughs> but for now, if you did this tutorial and you loved it, please let me know. And if you have any questions, please also let me know. So thanks guys, have a wonderful day and I hope to see you again soon. Bye now.